Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode, Boomer and I are out on a frozen lake bed with a one-person style tent anchored to the ice with some ice anchors. Everything set up inside, down bag, two winter rated sleeping pads, and we are definitely gonna have fun on this one. So the temperatures right now are negative 10 Celsius, forecasted to go down to negative 13 Celsius. So this ice should be popping and moaning and groaning all night long, which is gonna be awesome. Boomer's loving it, running around here, doing big laps around the ice, having a blast. And I think it's gonna be a really, really moody, dramatic sunset. Fingers crossed, because there's a lot of spotty clouds in the sky, and I'm definitely looking for a wild, wild sunset out here. I think it's gonna be really cool. So, tent is set up, everything's ready to go. Time to fire up the stove and make a hot coffee.
All right, guys, just coming back over to the tent from a little bit of an ice walk, enjoying my hot coffee, which has now cooled down. I have a tiny bit left. I might heat it up on the stove. I might just drink it as is. Boomer is loving it out here. He's running around on the ice, skating around, slipping and sliding. I'm leaving the tent door open, so if he does want to jump in, which he might actually jump in right now. He looks a little bit cold. He can go in and out of there as he pleases. But as you guys know, he is quite stubborn and he loves being out here and playing. Even if I'm in a hot tent or I've got the vehicle with the wood stove, he will be outside and he'll go in when he feels like it. So he's got total freedom to do whatever he wants to do. Um, it is absolutely beautiful out here though. So I do have a little bit of a story for you guys. And it just kind of reminded me of when I was kind of just organizing things here the wind okay so the wind is picking up and i do have a story last winter i camped out on a lake with just a sleeping pad and a sleeping bag no tent no tarp no shelter just out in the middle of the lake with a pad and a sleeping bag and a nice clear night no weather it was beautiful i had an awesome time but there was one thing that did happen the winds picked up in the middle of the night. Now I had a stick or some kind of anchor. I can't remember what I did. I think maybe I put a stick and I put it down in the crack of the ice and I hooked on my backpack to that so it didn't go blowing off. Um, and it didn't, but I did. <laughs> so in the middle of the night, I actually drifted probably about 50 to 75 feet away from my backpack in the middle of the night, asleep, totally asleep. The winds were just howling. And like I said, just a sleeping pad and my sleeping bag and the winds were strong enough and the ice was slick enough to actually slowly push me across the lake because when I woke up the next morning I had reached for my backpack because I had my food and coffee and stuff in there and I kind of poked around I couldn't feel it and I stuck my head out of the sleeping bag and I looked and I was like where's my backpack and then I looked and I could see it way off in the distance because I had my uh, my rain cover over top of it which is bright yellow and so I went over and investigated and the sleeping or the the backpack was still anchored in the ice, but the sleeping pad and myself had blown away in the middle of the night. So I had no idea, I was totally asleep. Woke up 75 feet away from my backpack. So I'm gonna make sure that uh, my backpack this time is secured to the tent. One of these anchors, I'm gonna click it in there. Make sure everything else is either in the tent or in the backpack. That way if the winds do pick up, which I suspect they will, we're out, out here on an open lake with a long river coming in and out of the, the lake on both ends. So it's kind of like a wind tunnel. Uh, the tent's totally secured with those screws. I'm not worried about that. But um, yeah, I'm gonna definitely make sure that's secured so nothing goes blowing across the lake either that way or that way. So I'm gonna finish up my cold coffee now and Boomer's gonna warm up a little bit. Gonna do a little bit of a tidy up and probably start on supper because the sun is starting to dip down. I can feel the temperature getting quite cold. And I wanna have all my cooking stuff done before sunset. That way I'm all ready to go and I can enjoy it and then jump inside of the tent in the dark and not have to worry about cleaning up. So cheers guys, gonna finish off my little bit of coffee, start on some hot supper.
right guys, I've started cooking dinner and I'm just gonna explain what I've got going on here. So Boomer is inside, <laughs> he's inching his way closer to the food because he can smell it. But what I've got going on here is I had to move the Trangia inside of the vestibule just a little bit. Come. Just a little bit to get it out of the wind because the wind is blowing through. Now using the frying pan on this stove, it puts it elevated so the wind can actually affect the flame. When using a pot or a kettle, or even just these little tiny pots that go inside of it, it really doesn't affect it at all. But with the pan, it's becoming a problem. So what I've done is I've tucked it inside of the vestibule and I'm using my backpack here on its side as a little bit of a wind block. And then I've taken one of the pots with the Trangia and put it upside down on the nonstick pan to give it a lid. So that steak is cooking up really nicely. I have two packs of white curry ramen noodles. I also brought a bag of green spinach and I have two nan breads. So Boomer's gonna have one steak mixed in with his dog food. I'm gonna have the other steak cut up in my ramen with some spinach and we're going to enjoy a nice hot meal probably sitting inside of the tent just to get out of the wind a little bit and hopefully by the time this is done that'll put us in line with a beautiful sunset. The sun is in the open right now, no clouds over in that area but there are clouds throughout the whole sky and it is windy so it's pushing them across so I am definitely excited for a sunset. So I'm gonna get this steak cooked up. Looks like it's doing really well and hopefully supper will go without any problem and I can get cleaned up really quickly. All right guys, supper is ready. Just trying to reach for the bowl here. It is still quite hot, but it feels really good on my legs. It is so cold out right now. It is negative 13, plus there's wind whipping through here. I have no idea what the wind chill is, but it is definitely cold. Boomer, come. 
So Boomer and I are gonna chill out inside of the tent. He has already had his dog food and his steak. I already ate my steak and I'm going to enjoy my spicy ramen with my nan bread that I brought, which is way down here. That is burning my leg. Holy, that's hot. So it is still almost sunset just before. It, um, it's a cold breeze pushing through here, guys. I'm telling you, I think sunset is definitely going to be enjoyable from inside of the tent. Do you want that? <laughs> no? Um, from inside of the tent, so I'm just going to give this a go. Mm. Oh, yeah. White curry ramen, spinach. I put it a lot of water in there, so it's like a noodle soup. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Super good. So, I am going to enjoy my supper right now and take my time because this is nice and warm. I'll probably have to reheat it halfway through because it is cold. I've got one tent door wide open. We've got this flap shut because the wind is actually coming in from this side. So this is doing really, really well. The bottom of the tent is totally open. So it is definitely going to be drafty, which I like. That's basically the reason why I bring a summer tent is to have the draft come through and get rid of all the condensation overnight. I've got a really good sleep system tonight. Bag, two pads, super warm. Sitting on the ice right now, I can feel the heat building underneath of me. So definitely going to be warm, but it is going to be drafty. So I'm going to have to have my sleeping bag zipped right up and uh, yeah, keep it zipped up all night. So like I said, guys, I'm going to enjoy supper and catch up with you guys right at sunset. Oh, man. Alright guys, just finishing up with supper right now. Gonna head out on the lake, play with Boomer for a few moments. He's kind of resting inside right now. He looks like he's gonna fall asleep, so I don't have to wake him up. That way he actually sleeps through the night and doesn't start tossing and turning in and out of the sleeping bag at about 4 a.m., which is never fun. So, I wanna get him out, get him tired out. I just need to, basically, all I'm gonna do with my Trangia is I have everything inside of one of the pots. My lid, my snuffer lid, the little pot gripper. I'm just gonna set it all inside of here and basically leave it in the vestibule on top of my backpack. That way it can't slide around in the wind if it is windy later on this evening. Little update on the sky situation. This side seems to be opening up really nicely and as well as everything else actually. There's spotty clouds, but this whole strip is just all blue sky right now. Got the moon right up here. Got half a moon way up high. And uh, I think it's definitely going to be a cold one tonight. So I just get that, that winter vibe, you know. The sky is open up. The moon's high in the sky. I just get that sense that it's going to be really cold. So I'm going to square this away. Supper was good, by the way. I will say that. Uh, I ate everything. Uh, I left one nan bread and I have a cinnamon raisin bagel and I believe some cheese or some peanuts for snacks later on tonight. Uh, I've got them in the pocket up in the tent along with my downfill pants. I have a long sleeve base layer shirt. I have my downfill slippers and I have a new pair of long ankle high or knee high socks that I'm going to be changing into later on and I have two down jackets on. I'm just trying to go through my head what I need to do and what I have. I'm wearing my marmot down jacket. I also have another lightweight down jacket underneath with no hood. And I'm wearing a hoodie underneath of that and a t-shirt. So I have a lot of layers going on. I'm basically going to be using my hoodie and my shirt as a pillow. Down jacket I'll put inside of the sleeping bag as kind of like a top layer that I could pull up. 
just in case I have to unzip the sleeping bag a little bit to let Boomer in and out as he needs to regulate his temperature. Other than that, supper was really good. It's super quiet out here other than the odd sound of like bloop bloop and then crack pop of the ice. And there is a large crack running directly in front of my knees, like right underneath the trangia, underneath of the tent, which is a new crack. And it goes quite far. I was sitting down eating and I could literally see the crack coming across the ice. Uh, there's a powder of like dusting of snow and you can see it just like falling in the crack coming towards me. That's probably one of the most unnerving feelings ever if you're in like a really, really deep lake and you can see a crack coming towards you. It's not the first time I've seen a crack coming my way actually, um, but uh, out here today, that is the first one. And then right behind the tent, there's another major fault that's going across the lake. So I'm kind of on an intersection of cracks. I'm not gonna move the tent, it's already anchored. I'm gonna leave it and we'll see how we make it. It's gonna be very cold tonight, so I'm not worried about the ice doing anything gnarly. But like I said, I'm just gonna do a quick cleanup. Sunset looks like it is about 20 minutes away. So let's have some fun on the ice and then kick back and relax and enjoy those sky colors and maybe another hot drink. I think I might do a hot drink maybe a hot chocolate or a coffee. I don't know, we'll see what happens, but let's get moving before we miss out. All right, guys, sunset is happening right now. Unfortunately, all of my beautiful puffy clouds are gone. So I have a few clouds way back there, as you guys can see, that are catching some of the sunlight. And the other direction behind the camera is kind of mid-lying clouds, but then everything else underneath the cloud is cloud. 
So there's no pocket for the sun to shoot up underneath and light up the rim of those clouds from underneath. So there's really not a whole lot of color. I was really hoping for an epic sunset, but I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna get it. And I've said it early many times, cause there is a streak of cloud going across. The moon is super bright white right now. Uh, but this streak of cloud, every now and then, the sun gets a little lower and it will light up purple and pink. That would be pretty cool, but I don't think there's going to be much of a sunset. Now, the benefit of this is as long as the clouds stay out of here, the stars will be epic. The whole sky full of stars. And right now, Jupiter and Venus are just about aligned. They are super, super bright in the sky. I believe it's going to be behind the tent, which would be right towards the camera, off in that direction. I believe they're high in the sky. If not, I'm just trying to get my bearings here. It's either there or it's over here. Either way, they will be super bright in the sky. So hopefully, if these clouds stay out of the sky, if we don't get a sunset, we will have epic stars. Now, the ice is cracking and popping and shifting like crazy. It is definitely getting colder. There are all kinds of new cracks, all kinds of funky sounds, which is pretty awesome. Boomer's inside the tent. He has no idea what to think because this is his first time sleeping out on the ice. Uh, so he has no idea what's going on. But some of the cracks are so loud and so strong that it just pops right in the air pad and it feels like someone's hitting underneath the sleeping pad. So he jumps every now and then because he doesn't know what it is. Um, I'm sure once I get in there, he'll be totally fine. He'll get used to it. But uh, just listen to this. If the microphone's picking up all those shifts in the ice, I have a feeling it's going to get loud tonight, but I am going to kick back and just relax, watch the sky for a little bit, see what happens with the color. Hopefully we get a sunset like I'm saying. If not, we'll have stars in about an hour. All right guys, still waiting on that sunset. The ice is just shifting and popping like crazy. It looks like it is going to be definitely a starry night. So I was gonna crawl inside the tent and get an early head start at getting nice and warm and relaxed. Uh, kind of like Boomer is right now, snuggled up in the sleeping bag. Uh, but it looks like the stars are going to be out tonight, so that means I'm going to be working late. So I am definitely pumped to get some epic star photos out here on this frozen lake with the lit up tent. So I don't know, I'm trying to move around and stay warm a little bit, just kind of shuffling across the lake. I'm kind of bored by myself now, Boomer's kind of crashed out on me. So trying to occupy myself here. Toes are getting a little cold. My shoes are rated for like minus 40 Celsius. So as long as I keep moving, my feet are actually really warm. I'm only wearing a thin layer of Cordura pants, so they're not insulated. Um, the knees are like four layers of Cordura. So I've been kneeling on the ice all day long and I've actually been doing pretty good. Down jackets, of course, always nice and warm, but uh, ultimately once that night air sets in, it's going to set in and it already is and I can feel it. So I am definitely excited for the stars and, and the 
ice is just popping like crazy. Um, definitely excited for the stars. Want to get some good footage. I'm probably going to do a night walk. I think that's what I'm going to do. I brought two headlamps with me and I brought two tent lights on purpose because I knew it was going to be in a vast area. And just in case something happened and I wanted to run over there with the camera way off the lake and it's total darkness. I'd like to be able to see where the tent is, right? So I brought an extra light, light up the tent as a beacon. I can light up the trail if I want to go up into the woods just to get a certain angle or whatever. I got two headlamps with me so I can wear one. If one dies, I can throw on the other one. I came totally prepared to be out here in the dark with a large playground. This is a vast open playground. So definitely going to have some fun. Um, no hot tent on this adventure, so I do have to stay warm, keep moving. And then when I come back, it's really important for me to keep my shoes dry so they won't be frozen when I go to sleep and wake up in the morning. I do have my, as I was mentioning earlier, I might as well go through this with you guys really quick. I brought Nature Hike Downfill Pants. These are awesome. I'm gonna be wearing these out tomorrow. Once I put these on, they're on for the rest of the trip. So I got my Nature Hike Downfill Pants. I have my Baffin booties. These are not downfill. I think I said they were downfill earlier. These are actually synthetic. I do not, in, intentionally I don't get downfill booties. The reason for that is I want to step on them and if I have to come out of here, which I will later on in the night to go for a pee, I'm going to be wearing these. They have grippy rubber on the bottom, but they're synthetic so when I step on the ice, it's actually still insulated on my feet whereas the downfill slippers compress down and you are totally cold and wet and they're not really that grippy. So these are Baffin booties. These are like the tall ones. These are awesome. Keep my feet totally warm. And then I have a pair of knee high, just regular socks, just nice thick socks. Uh, and then I have way up here in the head end, I brought a long sleeve base layer shirt. This is Matrix brand. This stuff is awesome. It's super thin, but it's really, really comfortable and it's actually really warm. So this hood is actually double layer. It comes up really high, like right up on the collar of my neck. That'll keep me totally warm. Nice dry layer to put on. And that's it for clothing. And as I mentioned earlier, down jackets and all that fun stuff. So I like keeping all my clothing up towards the head end of the tent whenever I go in small tents like this. If I have a two or three person tent, I'll push it off to the side. But where I'm in a one person tent, you really only had the head end or the foot end. I like pushing it up towards the head end and I like opening the door to the foot end. So I can come in, sit down, take my shoes off. And then all I gotta do is spin feet that way, head that way, lay down. And then I can just grab things like that. Just grab my pants, throw them on, throw the dirty ones down towards the foot end. So what do you guys do? I know that might sound a little strange, Everyone has their own system. I'd definitely be interested to hear what some people do out there. I know I've heard some people leaving their stuff outside and then grabbing it. I don't like getting snow or water or anything and that I just don't want them blowing away either. So let me know what you guys do. But uh, as you guys can tell, I am definitely desperate for a little bit of stimulation here uh, to keep my mind going and stay busy. I can see a little bit of peach happening up on that cloud streak. So. I'm going to jump out of the tent, take a look behind me and see what it looks like. And I bet Saturn and Venus, or Jupiter and Venus, are going to start popping in the sky. They're usually super early in the evening. Last night they were crazy bright. So I'm going to jump out, do a little bit of a walk, a little bit of a shuffle around the lake, stay warm, and hopefully bang out some beautiful photos. All right, guys, Jupiter and Venus are high in the sky right now. Super, super bright, way up behind the tent. It is very, very cold out right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to stay outside. I'm just, I keep peeking up in the sky. There is a nasty chill coming down this lake. Very, very cold, cold, brisk air. So 
the sky is totally open and the stars, all the stars are now just starting to come out. So I think what I'm gonna do is do a quick lap around the lake, warm up, and hopefully by the time I get back, they'll be popping in the sky because I really do want to get some footage of that, couple photos and whatnot. But Saturn, or Jupiter and Venus, I keep saying Saturn, Jupiter and Venus are way up in the sky. I got photos of that, check my Instagram. Link is down in the description if you're interested on any trip photos. And a little bit of video footage. It's so high in the sky in the angle right now, it's really hard to get on camera with the tent and everything. I don't have enough room to go back far enough to get everything in frame. So hopefully, with any luck, the rest of these stars will really start to pop. <laughs> it's cold, cold. I really, really want to jump inside and get nice and warm. While I'm sitting here, actually, move Boomer over there, I should probably mention camera gear. So this is something that actually gets asked really often on the camera, two things. One is, if you're by yourself, who's flying the drone? Me, I fly the drone. So here is my DJI Air 2S drone. This is a bag that I have to carry with me. You never see it on camera because that's the whole point. It's supposed to be capturing footage, not be in the footage like it is right now. So what I do when I'm hiking is I carry my camera bag and my drone bag on my neck with this camera and the tripod, just like this. And when I get to a location where I wanna start filming, I plant the tripod, I hang both of these bags on the tripod, go back and capture the footage. That's what we do, we're filmmakers. So that's why you never see the camera gear. I actually have a secondary tripod with me. This is what I'm gonna be using for inside the tent filming with the GoPro, which is in my pocket along with 14 other batteries. <laughs> so this is the reality of filming and being a photographer out in the bush. Camera gear, batteries, lights. This is why I brought so many lights. It's all about the camera. So the drone, I do drive and fly by myself. These drones are packed full of good features, automatic flight features that will follow you automatically. All you gotta do is pull over on the side of the road, throw the drone up, do all your settings, record, start, start driving, super simple. There are times where I'll set up my shot and all I have to do is hold the up joystick. I don't even need to look at the screen. Just hold the up joystick and then start driving. Count to 15, 20 in my head, go yeah, that's, that's good, that's good footage. Stop, pull over, land the drone, carry on. So yes, I do all my drone footage by myself and camera bag, like I said, this is always with me. The downside of this, I have to sleep with all of it. So not only do I have to sleep with Boomer in my sleeping bag, I also have to put this in my sleeping bag. I also have to put this in my sleeping bag. I also have to put all of the camera batteries. I mean, I even have drone batteries, a GoPro in my pocket right now, DSLR batteries, two cell phones. Um, I've got all kinds of goodies on me that have to stay warm in the winter time. So this is a big struggle with uh, being a filmmaker and photographer and YouTuber here is there's a lot of behind the scenes that you guys don't see. So yeah, I'm, I'm still out here packing, sleeping bag, tent, uh, all the cooking gear, everything I need to live and survive, but I'm also packing double in camera gear. So it can get a little hectic sometimes. Boomer is out here walking around and man, that looks awesome. The headlamp's just shimmering off the lake, all little sparkles of ice and frost. So I'm gonna jump out now. Hopefully that little bit of information helps some of you guys with your questions. I never even thought to answer that a little earlier on, but I'm glad I didn't, because that was a great time waste for me. Uh, not that the, the answer was time waste, just a good time advance, I should say. Now I'm gonna go for a quick walk, and these stars are definitely popping. So let's go for one last quick walk. Boomer, you're gonna come or you're gonna go inside, wherever you're going. You might as well come inside. One last walk and then in the tent, guys. So let's go.
All right, guys, back from my last walk of the evening. Boomer and I both enjoyed the lake. As you guys can see, I've already got my outer jacket off. Bed is ready to go. All my inside clothing, base layers, and everything I'm getting changed into is ready to go. So, watch out there, Boomer. All I got to do now is move my backpack, slide it in, and uh, close the outer door. So I'm just going to fold all this stuff over my backpack, and then I can just slide it across the ice and buckle it inside with the buckles onto the strap. That way, nothing will go astray during the evening i've got my camera bag in there drone bag uh outer jacket everything is ready to go i just want to get inside and get warm because man it is cold so i'll see you guys inside the tent all right well now that i'm inside of the tent that's half the battle because now I've got to work in this very small space and get changed, which is always a struggle. So often I always say one person tent is like a half person tent. You really don't want to be going out with a one person tent and a massive downpour or like a heavy snowfall. A two person tent is usually a one person. Three person is usually a two person and so on and so forth. Uh, one person like I'm in tonight is kind of bare bones minimum. You know, I just needed enough to just basically get in, keep all my stuff from blowing away. There's not supposed to be any weather forecasted. So I was just looking for some wind protection. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? That was a loud one. That popped, that should have vibrated right through the tripod. He's vibrating right now. That was a big one. I felt that right in my, my legs, my feet. That was a loud pop in the ice. So that's gonna be happening all night long. But uh, yeah, all I brought this tent basically was for wind protection. So my stuff doesn't go blowing across the lake. It just helps keep everything organized. So while I'm shivering and shaking here, he's shivering and shaking. I'm gonna quickly get changed, jump inside the sleeping bag, and then I'll be able to show you guys around the tent. And uh, you guys will see how cramped this is with all the camera gear and everything else. So let me get changed and I'll be right back. All right, guys, managed to get everything done in a pretty decent amount of time. As you guys can see, this sleeping bag is gigantic. Yes, Boomer is in here. Here he is. <laughs> he likes to curl up right down in between my legs and he'll usually put his chin in his belly like right there right on my belly button just once I get this zipped up he kind of hunkers in and in a cuddle mode so <laughs> hello so he is definitely happy he's warm and so am I I'm changed into my down pants slippers I also brought a balaclava also known as a ski mask um, I don't know should be right here so I also brought my ski mask on this trip because I knew it was going to be very cold I'm not sure where he's going jump over here so this is a very bare bones camping trip not a whole lot of fancy stuff going on um, no hot tent no truck no uh, just bare bones just basic stuff and sometimes this is the way that I really really like doing things just reverting back to just simplicity sleeping bag pad tent maybe even a tarp or just a hammock just simple stuff but it does make the filming process a little bit bland because there's not a whole lot to film but I still had a lot of fun that's definitely what I'm out here for um, the inside of this tent is likely going to be covered in frost because it's already starting to form and this is a summer tent with the bottom wide open so this is like maximum airflow and I've got the head vent open up here as well but this is just part of winter camping you got condensation especially with two people in here or me and a dog um, there will be a lot of condensation that's to be expected but Hopefully it'll stay cold enough, which it will. The forecast is negative 15, negative 16, somewhere in that ballpark. So it won't have a chance to melt is what I'm trying to say. Even in the morning sunlight, it's not going to melt. So no worries there of any dripping. But uh, yeah, this was definitely enjoyable walking out on the ice in the night. Uh, headlamp on, sparkling, glistening ice, snapping and popping. 
definitely enjoyable the stars right now i wish i can capture what i can actually see because it is just breathtaking this is the type of stuff that people read about in magazines people scour the internet watching movies and like looking at photos and stuff like that and i'm fortunate enough to just call it life this is my life this is what i do day in and day out video after video photo after photo i am that guy that creates the content that those people search uh just living my life sharing my experiences so i'm very very happy to be out here tonight on the ice is what i'm trying to say so i'm basically going to wrap this up for tonight to boomer and i are going to get nice and comfortable in here i do have a movie saved on my phone as usual probably going to fall asleep halfway through i'm not going to lie i'm pretty tired but uh we're going to give it a go going to get this mesh zipped shut that way he doesn't wander outside of the tent in the middle of the night and uh yeah we'll catch up with you guys first thing in the morning for coffee so good night everybody and i'll see you at sunrise
Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful, crisp and cold morning out here on this frozen ice. I've got to say, last night, it was like an orchestra of music from the ice. It was like ice musical all night long, stars in the sky. The ice was just shifting, snapping and popping. Some of them were so loud, it almost, like the image in my mind was like an iceberg or like a ice field breaking off and kind of floating away because they weren't just cracks and pops they were just like long really long cracks and grinds like something separating so there are a bunch of new cracks out here it looks like it almost did pick up with wind or a little bit of flurries either early this morning or late last night because there is a little bit of snow out here on this lake and a lot of the cracks are filled in and they're like bright white so that's how I could tell where all the new cracks are because they're just like little veins running through they're just super bright white with all the snow that got trapped in the crack but last night was definitely a very very warm sleep I was super toasty warm but we did not get that sleep without a major problem so I'm going to explain that in just a moment Boomer's out here running around chasing after some ice and snow, kind of scraping his nails wherever he can. Uh, I'm going to enjoy my coffee, which is almost no longer hot anymore. Kind of warming up my fingers right now. And uh, just take in this beautiful morning. Sunrise came up really quickly. There is a lot of cloud in the sky, so sunrise was very, very quick, very fast. But uh, the sun has not finished poking up through the trees, so who knows, we'll see what happens. But for now, morning coffee, so cheers guys, and I'll catch up with you in just a moment. All right guys, so kicking back, enjoying some coffee on this crisp and cold morning. I've got the Thermarest out on the ice right now. This thing is incredible how warm they get. No joke, I've had this one for over 12 years. So it is actually the Ridgerest with the silver foil on top. I've used it so many times that silver has basically worn off and it almost looks green on both sides now but the r value on this is only i believe 2.6 it is such a difference such an incredible difference sitting on this and i absolutely love it for snow camping or ice camping because laying down on the ice right now i can actually feel the heat building in my back and on the back of my legs just such a treat to have this so highly recommend if you guys are thinking about a closed cell pad me personally i go with the ridge rest from therm rest and it works really really good my wife has the same one and hers is almost brand new and it's almost kind of funny looking at them side by side how many times i've used this and how many trips it's been through just incredible i'll probably never get rid of it and talking about how comfortable pads are in the winter sleeping on them that brings us to our problem that i had last night 
So I am on a brand new Amok winter light pad. I have two of these. My last one had a little bit of a problem during a hurricane that I camped in. Go figure, right? The only thing that went wrong during that entire trip was when I made it back to my truck, I had a smashed out window and everything inside was totally soaked with seawater and the electrical in my window and my driver door lock and a whole bunch of other things were fried and ruined, which is now fixed. I fixed everything and I got the window replaced, so not bad. But the other casualty during that massive hurricane hammock camping trip was a tiny hole, tiny hole in my air pad. So, if you guys haven't seen that video, go back through the channel. It was about, I don't know, two, three months ago. It was Hurricane Fiona. I hammock camped on the ocean because I'm crazy. Yes, I know. But where I'm going with this is this pad suffered a catastrophic hole last night. And I mean major. We're talking like an inch and a quarter long tear. I was laying down and Boomer was shifting outside of the sleeping bag, walking around, and then just like that flat and I was like what is happening and then it hit me boomers nail sliced the pad open wide open so not empty right now and it was like negative 15 degrees Celsius last night so what did I do well I reached for the patch kit that these come with and I had some material I'll give you guys a close-up of this in a little bit but I reached for the patch kit and it has the matching material and the tube of super glue. In my experience, those never ever work, uh, especially in negative temperatures. But as the glue goes on, it goes through a chemical process where it actually gets hot and then it starts to cure. So it really doesn't matter if it's freezing or not. It's just the material sometimes is really brittle. So I put it on and I'm inside the tent, keep in mind with everything in there, on my knees, just huddled up like this, trying to glue this pad. Uh, with a headlamp on and Boomer kind of whimpering and whining because he's cold, go figure. Um, it said about it took 10 minutes to, to cure, like two minutes. Two minutes of that patch sitting on top and it was totally cured. I pumped it up to maximum pressure and I thought for sure I was going to have a horrible night sleeping on this thermorest, tossing and turning. It is still full pressure. This is the first time in my life and I go camping a lot. This is the first time that I've ever had to patch a pad in a situation like that and it hold all night long. And I think this is gonna be a permanent patch. I don't think I'm gonna clean it up. I think I might put a little bit of glue around the edge of the patch just to make sure it doesn't peel back when I get home. But uh, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. It actually worked and I had a great night's sleep. So I'll bring you guys in. You can have a look at the damage and how I fixed it. All right guys, so right here, you guys can see that massive patch that I put in, and that is a large hole. To put that into perspective, I have my box of matches here. Just a standard box of wooden stick matches. That's a big hole. So I put a big old patch on that. This is a little white dried kind of chemical gas that the glue gives off as it cures. And that thing is absolutely strong. It happened kind of in a critical area down by the seam. So I pushed the patch right down to the edge, glued it. When I go home, I'll go around the edge with some more glue, maybe clean up this mess a little bit. And I think it's gonna be a strong contending patch. So with that patch kit, I gotta say, I definitely got lucky. Now I have been here many times before camping with no tent, no shelter doing survival based camps, bushcraft shelter camps. So camping in the cold is nothing new to me. And I kind of laughed when it happened because out of the very rare times I actually bring this this year camping, this was a night that I decided to bring it on the ice. And sure enough, I had a hole in my air pad because of this little devil. So patched it, everything went really well. I'm actually really, really happy because that pad is one of my favorites and I use it a lot. So it's patched, it works. I got very lucky is what I'm trying to say. Uh, there is some machinery noise off in the distance. I can hear it way across the lake and I can hear snowmobiles. So it sounds like there's a big group of people offloading their sleds and they're probably gonna be touring the trails, which is perfect because I'm heading out of here so I don't have to listen to the racket of that. But uh, I got my sleeping bag up here. That's gonna dry out a little bit, get some of that moisture wicked off. Water bottle, I had to sleep with this last night. I got lucky there again because 
it didn't freeze totally. This little bit of ice actually was from leaving the bottle out last night while I was cooking. And when I put it back inside the sleeping bag, it, uh, it basically didn't freeze all the way, but it kind of stayed frozen. The cap is actually frozen on there now that I poured the water out. So a little bit of water left from coffee. I did have to make some water late last night with some chunks of ice. I put it inside the, the pot, lit the trangia. We're talking like late, late, like right around that patch. Um, I was just kind of out and about and said, well, I might as well make some water. Uh, so that was taken care of. The tent is full of condensation on the inside of just frost. It's like a frosty cave. Uh, and that's just to put things into perspective for those who don't go winter camping. And often you'll hear things on YouTube or read articles about getting the right tent with no condensation. There's no such thing, okay? I'm gonna be the bearer of bad news. There's no such thing. This is a summer tent. You guys can see all the mesh. The, the tent is like four to five inches off of the ice. There is a ton of ventilation coming in here. It does not matter. Your condensation from your breath is going to go up. It's gonna get trapped on the fly of the tent. It's gonna freeze into frost. You're never gonna get away from that, okay? So it is frosty. I'm gonna pull that fly off, give it a good shake roll it up i'm going to cram everything into the backpack a big mess and uh basically start the process of getting out of here so one last sip of cold coffee now and we'll start the pack up process All right guys, just packing up the tent right now and I figure I might as well take this opportunity to show you guys this big crack. So, if the camera is picking this up, the tent was positioned right here. And this big giant crack happened right underneath of the tent. And I'm telling you, I felt that one. So this is a giant long crack all the way across the lake, all the way across the lake. And basically, I would have been laying just like this when it happened. So, yeah, things like that happen all the time camping on ice. And it definitely is an eye opener every single time, no matter how comfor comfortable you get on the ice. This always opens your eyes. So, I'm just about packed up. My fingers are cold. I'm basically going to cram the rest of this in the backpack and hopefully get it done really quickly get my jacket on because the wind is starting to pick up it's only about negative seven negative eight degrees celsius right now so it's not terribly cold the sun is poking up above the trees and i can actually feel its warmth but it's winter time it's still cold so i'm going to get this packed up really quick and hopefully get warm All right guys, we've got everything packed away inside of the backpack. We are ready to get moving. So I still have to get Boomer's jacket on. I've actually got it inside mine warming up right now. And we're basically gonna be hiking off this lake and getting out of here, get home, get this video out to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, definitely drop them down below. And until next time, peace out guys, and we'll see you in the next adventure.